Hello, my name is Kishwani. That's K E S H W A N I. Kishwani. We are here because we want to improve our vocabulary. Today we'll have our lesson number 103. The words for our vocabulary lessons, if we begin with day number 101, have been coming from this book that I'm holding in my hand here, the R and Pre Entrance Exam. Vocabulary words that you will find in this book, in this exam, are very similar to the vocabulary words that they test on GRE, GMAT, SAT or SAT. It doesn't matter which exam you're preparing for. If you learn these words, it will help you raise your score in any of these exams. They are equally useful. Let's begin, shall we? We are on page number 30. So if you happen to, if you happen to own this book, turn to page number 30. If you don't have the book, just follow the work that I'm doing on the blackboard, okay? We are on page number 30. Problem number five. Problem number five says, number five. It says, his symptoms, his symptoms, symptoms of the disease were gradually gradually disappearing his symptoms for the disease were gradually disappearing and then they go on to say the next sentence his disease his disease was in a state was in a the state of, and here's the vocab word, the state of blank. And among the among the four answer choices that they give us, the right answer here would be his his disease was in the state of remission. His disease was in the state of remission. Re, mish, and his state. His, his disease was in a state of remission. Let's learn that word, shall we? The word remission is a noun here, obviously. The remission is a noun. It comes from the word remit, which is a verb. It's a verb. Listen very carefully. And it has three different meanings. One, two, three. One meaning of remit that almost everybody knows is to send money to send money to someone and if you're using the word remit in that sense if you're using the word remit in that sense the noun would be remittance I don't have it here the noun here would be and if I misspelled it if I misspelled the word don't make a fuss about it just look it look it up yourself just remember that if you use the word remit in that sense to send money the noun will be remittance, not remission. All the meaning of the word remit is to forgive. Is to, is to forgive. To forgive or to pardon or to excuse. To, to forgive, to pardon or to excuse. That is not the meaning that is being used here. That is not the meaning that is being used here. They tell us that his disease is gradually disappearing. Something that appears gradually is said to remit. To, to disappear or to diminish gradually. To diminish or to disappear or to gradually or to gradually go away. To gradually go away, as in the disease. So, if it's gradually disappearing, we say it is remitting. It is. It is in the state of remission. His disease is in a state of remission. How do we know that? Because they go on to tell us that the that, that the symptoms are disappearing gradually. Well, if the symptoms are disappearing gradually, hopefully it's getting better. This the disease seems to be in a state of remission. Let's go on. Number. Number six. In question number five, this is number five. In question number five, 
Let's look at the answer choice. So this was answer choice, whatever this answer choice was, 5B. Let's look at the answer choice that they gave us, the word that they gave us in answer choice A. I would like to learn that word, shall we? We need the room, obviously, we have to erase everything. The word in answer choice A is And for those of you who have studied physics, you will find a very simple word. The word is, this is 5A, the word is inertia. In or inertia. Inertia. Don't say inertia, like I just did a second ago. Inertia. What does it mean? In physics it means this is the definition as, it's, as, it's, as, as, as it comes from the physics. It means tendency, tendency of an object to rest or tendency of an object to remain at rest, to remain at rest or a body in motion to stay in motion in a straight line. I don't know why we have to learn such technical definitions here. Unless, unless disturbed or acted upon acted upon by an external force that's what it means in, cont in the context of physics but when the word is used as a simple English language it simply means resistance to change. It simply means internal resistance, internal resistance to change. Well if you didn't if you don't if you didn't like your apartment, if you don't like your building, if you don't like your apartment, why don't you simply move? You've been there for seven years and you've been complaining all the time. Why don't you simply move? And person might survive. It's just a matter of inertia. You know it's just a lot of trouble to move, so we have a tendency to resist change. And the internal resistance to change is said to be inertia, which is exactly what this is. If the body is at, is, at, is, at, is at rest, it will remain at rest, and if the body is in motion, it will remain at motion in a straight line. It will not change directions or slow down or speed up unless acted upon by an external force. Let's go on. Number six. We are on number six now. The word was inertia. Question number six says, question number six says, Mike is not really sick. He is not really sick. He pretended, he pretended to be sick, to to be sick, to avoid having to, to avoid having to go to work, having to go to work. He's not really sick, he's pretended to be sick because he didn't want to go to work. He pretended to be sick because to avoid having to go to work. He is simply he is simply, and here is the answer choice, we have to pick among the four answer choices, and the right answer here is, Mo Ling, Mo Ling, Ger, Malinger, Malinger is the word. Is the verb here malinger? What does it mean to malinger? Well, it means exactly what it says in the sentence. It means to pretend to be sick. 
in order to avoid having to work or having to perform your duty. And the person who does that is called malingerer. Michael is simply malingering. What is he doing? He is simply malingering. Maling. He's simply malingering. Malinger, as I said before, it means to pretend to be ill, to pretend to be ill or injured, to pretend to be ill or injured in order to avoid work or duty. If you don't want to perform your duty and you pretend to be sick or injured, you are a malingerer. The word is, the noun is, the person who is doing it is said to be malingerer, a person. That was number six. There is nothing else in the number six that we need to learn. All the other words are very simple. Let's move on to number seven, shall we? Shall we? Number seven he is malingering. He is feigning sickness. F E I G N. Feign means to pretend. To pretend. And this is the word that we have learned before already in the first series of the vocabulary, day number one through 100. I just don't have the list in front of me, so I cannot tell you precisely which day. Actually, I'm going to put it on the side and I'll tell you in the next video. How about that? F E I G N feign. It means to pretend. He's feigning to be sick. One might feign a surprise. One might feign uh, sadness. One might even feign a smile. Pretend to smile. Just give them a fake smile. Or to feign ignorance. You know the answer. I asked you a question yesterday and you knew the answer. But you feign ignorance. You pretended you didn't know it. You pretended to be ignorant. You pretended you did not have knowledge. You were feigning ignorance. What were you feigning? You were feigning ignorance. One might feign, as I said, one might feign a surprise. Oh, really? As if you didn't know it before. I was feigning surprise. So, if one, one who is feigning to be sick, one who is pretending to be sick or pretending to be injured, is said to malinger. Number seven. There was a, there was a great deal of ill will. There was a great deal of ill will. Oh, I didn't mean to erase that thing. There was a great deal of ill will between the families. Between the families. It was hard to ignore there there was a great deal of ill will between these two families these two families did not get along at all they hated each other with their guts they hated each other very much and you could not possibly ignore their one could not possibly ignore their and, the, and among the answer choices here are the four answer choices a, B, C, D. Typically, I don't put down all four answer choices on the blackboard. Here we are putting all four answer choices because all four of the answer choices happen to be vocabulary words. So we're going to learn all of them. The first answer choice is avarice. Next one is animosity. And then we have admonish admonition. Admonition, and finally we have veneration. In all of these four, all of these four words, as I told you before many times on several occasions over the, over the course of the last two days, beginning with day number one hundred one, or even day number one hundred, that all of these words you will most definitely see in the GRE, GMAT, SAT, SAT, TES, HESI, all of these exams, because these are this is sort this is sort of vocabulary one expects to have if one is applying for any kind of professional degree. If you're going to college, particularly if you're applying to graduate school, one expects to have certain command of the English language. And these are the sort of words that one would expect you to 
No. Let's, let's learn them, shall we? The correct answer here is animosity. The correct answer here is animosity. I'm not going to cover them right now. We're not going to cover them again. We just learned this word on day number 101. It was either 101 or yesterday, 102. In the last two days, we learned this word animosity. Actually, I can tell you, if you give me a second, I can tell you precise day when we learned it. It was either 101 or, as I said, or 102. Oh, it was day number 101, the very first day of the, of, of the new series. So we're not going to cover them again. You watch the 101 because if you keep repeating the, repeating the words, same words over and over again, it will take an inordinate amount of time. It will take an inordinate amount of time. I'll tell you in the next video when we learned it. Let's learn all the other words, avarice, admonition, and veneration. Avarice. A -a -ris. It's a noun. It just means greed. It just means greed. Desire, an extreme desire for wealth. An extreme desire for wealth. If you're greedy, you have avarice. You have greed. Avarice. This is something actually I just turned out that we actually learned this word on day number 35. In the first series, day, day number 1 through day number 100, on day number 35 we learned the word avarice, which means greed. The synonym, the synonym would be, synonym of avarice would be cupidity. Q bit. E T cupidity, which is a noun. Cupidity. Avarice is the word, and the adjective of avarice would be avaricious. Avaricious. F O R I S H O S. Avaricious. Michael is avaricious. He's greedy. Let's move on. Let's move on then. Let's turn the next word in the answer choices. Oh jeez, I keep erasing these words here. Fain and inordinate. The next word in the answer choices that we want to learn is admonish. Ad -mon -ish. Admonish, which is a verb which means to scold, to rebuke, to reprove. show disapprobation to show approval to show disappro uh, disapprobation to, 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 to rebuke to scold is, is to admonish and the noun would be admonishment we're not going to talk about any of these words any of these words here that you see here because we just learned these words on day number 101. As I said before, we, can, we are not going to keep repeating, we need to make progress. If you are interested, we are here to learn, we are not here to babysit. So if you are interested, watch the word day number 101. If you have not already watched so, there will be no reason. I see no reason why you would be sitting here watching day number 103 if you haven't watched the first videos, day 1 through 102. Go them in sequence. Or at least start with day 101. The next word we want to learn is to reprimand. Now I'm not sure, maybe reprimand is also something that we learned before uh, in, the, in the first series, I'm not sure. I'm pretty, I'm, I'm pretty sure we did.
reprimand and censor. I'll tell you in the next video. Reprimand and to let's learn of this let's learn this word here. Send send sure. Listen very carefully. Send sure not to be confused with not to be confused with send sir. It has a sir sound. Sir, sure. Send sure, send sir. Send sir means to take out the objectionable part. What does what censor bureau does? Send sure means to review, to reprimand, to, re to, to, to show disapprobation, uh, to admonish someone, to scold someone. You did a horrible job, you did a bad job, you naughty boy, naughty boy. Or your boss might admonish you. But if, but if the boss, listen very carefully, if your boss is admonishing you, if your boss is scolding you, it's more of a formal setting, isn't it? It's different, it's a little bit different than scolding your child. So if you're being reprimanded, again, you see I, the word just slip out of my mouth, you would not say scolded, you would not say my boss scolded me because you only scold. Scold has a, has a connotation of being informal. In the formal setting, we use the word reprimand and censure. These are formal. Let's make a note of it. Reprimand. Reprimand and censure. Censure have have connotation of formality. These these words are used in the formal setting. Let's see, we are, we are done with this thing. We need to erase it, obviously, so that we can progress. This video is going to be long. This word I want to talk about. Simple word, we use it all the time. Con a te shunt. Again, this is a word we have learned before. All of these words we have learned before, actually on day number 16. Vocabulary words, day 16, type it up and you will learn this word connote and connotation. Connotation means connotation is a suggestion or a hint. So if you use the word reprimand or censure, it, it hints, it suggests. Formality. They are, they are very formal words. They connote the verb would be, which is why we put it on the blackboard so we can learn the connotation, which is a noun. And what's the verb of connotation? The verb is connote. Co note. You would say they connote, they connote, in other words, they suggest, they imply, they hint at, they connote formality. Formality is a noun of formal. In the formal setting, you would say reprimand and censure. You would not say scold. You one does not say my boss scolded me, my boss reprimanded me. And usually when you're reprimanded in a formal setting at the workplace, typically it goes in your file. They make a note of it. They make a note of that reprimand in your file. It goes in the official file, your personnel file. Do you know what a personnel file is actually called? If it goes in your file, let's learn this, shall we? It goes in your file. And that such a file is called your dossier. What is it called? A dossier, an official file containing papers, let me write it down, a dossier is an official file, a file, official file containing papers with detailed information about a 
person or a subject or a place. Your personnel file, as I said, your personnel file is said to be your dossier. And you may keep a dossier on anything. One might keep a dossier on a place or on a business. If the, uh, if the law enforcement authorities suspect that something illegal is going on in a certain business, they might keep a file on you. They might keep track of your activity, of all the, all the things that are going on in that business. They might keep track of everything that's going on there. And the file that is kept is said to be the dossier of their business. It's an official file where they keep record of everything that goes on on that subject. Whether the subject is a person or a place, it doesn't matter. So when you're, when you're being reprimanded, when you're being censured, it usually ends up in your dossier. And it stays here forever and ever. You can't get rid of it. This becomes a part of your permanent record. The last word that we have in the answer choice is in this question, question number seven. We are still at question number seven. The last word we have is venerate, which I already put on the blackboard earlier, but I'm going to end the video here and we're going to pick up from here, okay? Because uh, venerate, there is a lot of things that we want to learn. There are a lot of synonyms and antonyms that we want to learn. And it will just take too long. Video as it is is too long. I'll see you tomorrow, okay? I know.